Hi everyone, in the news this week, Arnold Schwarzenegger was involved in a nasty car accident, so presumably the police are looking to speak to Linda Hamilton or Robert Patrick. The Conservative Party put in some paperwork with the Electoral Commission to rename itself, quote, the Conservative Work Event. And professional attention seeker, con man and part-time magician Yuri Geller has claimed that an alien invasion is imminent, although perhaps he just doesn't know how to spell the word Russian. Because this week's main news story has been the growing build-up on the Ukrainian border, with everybody itching for war, except of course those who actually live in Ukraine. They stand to do a bit as well in a war with Russia, as Bermuda will competing with Russia at the upcoming Winter Olympics. There's actually quite a few options for that metaphor, the competing sides include Eritrea, Trinidad, Togo and famously snow-free Saudi Arabia, who are presumably only even invited so that the Chinese host can boast about their comparatively clean human rights record. Anyway, Russia has hundreds of thousands of troops mobilised, and up against them are of course Ukraine's smaller and less well-equipped army, but also a population of 44 million people who seem to be willing to arm themselves and fight an insurgency if the worst should happen. You also have the US, possibly, and perhaps other troops from the UK and anyone else who feels a need to find a distraction from home affairs. Perhaps Emmanuel Macron will commit French troops if he thinks it will give him a boost in the polls, just as Boris is looking at it largely with an eye to causing a distraction from Partygate. I heard the expression, quote, killing two birds with one stone, mentioned on the news, but as far as distractions go, this would be more like that stone that killed the dinosaurs, probably with similar global repercussions too. You know, I saw snow falling the other day, and after glancing up at the sky, I asked my neighbour if the bombs had started falling in Kiev yet. The most interesting commentary on the whole question of what to do next comes from America, where both the left and the right are split on the decision. The Democrats spent four years complaining about Trump not standing up to Putin, but they also don't want to spend the next decade grinding out an expensive war. On the right, it's the usual arguments of imperial exceptionalism versus telling countries in Europe they should maybe spend a bit more in defence and stand up for themselves for once. You know, there's a lot to be said for how President Trump was the only president in modern history not to drag the US into a new war. And if the US does end up sending thousands of troops to their death in Eastern Europe, it will be interesting to see Trump on television explaining to left-wing news commentators about how it wouldn't have ever happened on his watch, and if they want to stop the war, they should vote for him next time around. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.